Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be making sourdough bread from scratch. So I've always wanted to try making sourdough bread, but I always felt very intimidated by it. I thought it would be really complicated. And in the beginning, it was a bit tricky, but eventually once you get the hang of it, it becomes really easy. And I'm just a home baker, which means I only bake about one loaf of bread. Um, a week but if you are if you own a bakery or you're selling the bread then obviously you're making more sourdough than I am and right now as a home baker I don't really have my routine all set up yet so I'm still kind of working on it it is my first time making sourdough bread so it's still something that I'm new to and that I want to get used to before I like post a routine video of how I go about making the bread because of course with sourdough a lot of it is waiting for the dough to ferment and so it's really good to have a routine of when you're going to be feeding your sourdough when you're going to be doing the bulk fermentation of your bread loaf and when are you going to do your proofing and all of that but we'll get into that and on another video in this video i'm just going to show you my first attempt at making sourdough bread and sourdough bread starts with a good sourdough starter so a sourdough starter is essentially a mixture of water and flour that is fermented over a few days until it becomes active and it acts as the leaven for your bread so it allows your bread to rise now I will admit this is actually my second attempt at making sourdough starter but the bread itself was my first ever sourdough loaf however with my first sourdough starter I think it kind of flopped a bit because it started to develop mold however I do feel like after I've uh, practiced a bit more with sourdough starter I do feel like I could have um, uh, revived the previous starter the first starter that I started with but I did try a different recipe this time around so let me just go into a little bit of sourdough starter theory first before we go into the video and I'll share with you some of the things that I did different the second time around with the second batch of sourdough starter So like I said, sourdough starter is your leaven for your sourdough bread. It acts as a natural yeast. You're basically capturing wild yeast by allowing the flour and the water to ferment over a few days. It takes about a week to two weeks, depending on how cold the environment is, to be able to get you started to the point where it is active and it's usable to be able to make sourdough bread. With sourdough starter recipes, there's different hydration levels to your sourdough starter, and this means the ratio of flour to water. Most sourdough starter recipes have an equal one-to-one -one ratio of flour to water, but in a higher hydration recipe, you'd have more water, and in a lower hydration recipe, you'd have less water. Yes, Mariam. What's wrong? You want a blue toy? I give you a blue toy. My first batch of sourdough starter was a high hydration um, recipe, meaning I had more water than flour, and this created a runnier mixture. However, I felt like with that recipe, I needed to feed it more often and it was more high maintenance than a low hydration recipe. It also depends on the season that you're in and the temperature of the environment. So in the winter, I would suggest to go with a low hydration recipe, while in summer, it could be better to go with a high hydration recipe. I started making this sourdough in winter, so or going into winter, so I really did need a more low hydration sourdough starter recipe. I found that with the high hydration, watery, runny sourdough starter, um, I didn't feed it enough because it started to develop an alcohol layer on top of the starter. And after the fact, I found out that this was an indication that the sourdough starter was hungry and I just needed to feed it more often. But I only fed it every 24 hours and so eventually I forgot I think on a day and it started growing mold and so I dumped that batch. With this second batch, I tried a lower hydration recipe, meaning my mixture was more thick and clumpy and it worked out much better for me because it was less maintenance and just really easy to feed it. I didn't have to worry if I went over the 24 hours. Sometimes I could feed it every 12 hours if needed. And I found that it became very active very quickly after feeding it. That's where the whole routine comes in because a lot of people would feed their sou sourdough starter the night before in order to be able to make bread the next morning. However, mine, my starter took way too quickly to become active. So if I fed it the night before, by the time it came to next morning, it had already risen 
skin and drop whereas when you want to make your braid is at that highest most active point which is when it's like fully risen next what i did differently is i used warm water instead of cold water you want to use something that is has the lowest amount of chlorine in it because i've heard that chlorine can kill your starter here in pe tap water is not potable at all so i did use bottled water and bottled room temperature water with my first batch but this time around i did boil some of that bottled water and then i mixed them together to get a warm water um, some people measure with a the thermometer the temperature of the water you want it to be around 82 degrees celsius but i didn't measure in this case i just used warm water kind of like bath water i literally just felt it with my finger to see if it was good next i used a different type of flour so i did use cake flour a lot of recipes call for all-purpose flour and rye flour and over time you can experiment with different types of flours that, that gives different flavors to your sourdough bread um, but for me for this first round i just wanted to make sure that i got it right first before i experimented and um, so i just used simple cake flour although so with the second batch i went for a more natural looking flower i used the eureka brand i don't know if this was why my first sourdough starter flopped or not but i just wanted to be safe and so i used a, a, a higher quality flower i've heard that you don't want to use flour with artificial coloring in it because that could kill your starter so i just went for the most natural looking brand on the shelf but i really don't think that made much of a difference to be honest and then lastly with the second attempt i did take a more relaxed approach to the sourdough starter i didn't measure much i didn't use the scale as much as i did the first time around and i went more by feel i was going by you know i was going with the flow and what my starter needed what i could see <laughs> Whereas in the second attempt, I didn't. Whereas in the first attempt, I wanted to follow a 24 hour schedule. But in the second attempt, I just simply looked and monitored my starter and tried to see when it needed to be fed. Um, which I found much better for me and also how much it needed to be fed I literally went by look and feel I, I needed to see what exactly my specific starter needed and not follow the rules too much, you know this I think is what made the most difference because it, you become in touch with your starter and you start to realize like a baby what it needs you know anyways that's all I did different with the second attempt of sourdough starter but let's get into how I made my first loaf of sourdough bread So to start with the starter, as you can see, I did use the scale here, but you will see as I go on in the video that I do tend to ditch the scale, but I just write um, the weight of my jar underneath it, just in case I ever need to use the scale. And it has a lid that doesn't completely close, which is a really good thing because you don't want to have a an airtight jar because that's also the other thing. The, previous jar that I used with my first batch of sourdough starter had an airtight plastic rim around the lid of the jar meaning that when you closed it it was airtight and you need to allow air to go into the jar um, so that the flour and the water can ferment so you want to be able to cover the jar with um, something that is loose that still allows air into the jar so even if it's like a cloth or um, a wet tea towel something like that you're just simply uh, closing the jar so that the flour and the water doesn't get crusty but essentially you still want to allow air into the jar so I just add in water and flour and as you can see I don't even measure the temperature of the water I just use my finger to um, see if it's warm enough kind of like bath water and I just mix together bottled water and boiled water Then I give it a few stirs and so for this day one of starting the starter I want a really thick pasty 
consistency as you can see i didn't really measure the water here i end up going back and adding water until i think that the mixture looks pasty enough this consistency you'll only have on day one uh, when you're starting your starter um, you'd want it to be really thick and pasty like that And then I pop the lid on again, not screwing the lid on, just uh, laying the lid flat. And then 48 hours after that, I do my first feeding. This is the progress that we have so far. You can see some bubble action. I do use this hair tie around my jar to measure where my flower was at before, uh, so that I can monitor the rise action that happens. And when I open the lid, you can see that a little bit of that alcohol layer has started to form, but it does have a lot of good bubbles in there as well, which is a good thing. For the first feeding, you want to discard half of the starter so or i i discard just a little bit more than a half of the starter and you discard so that um you can keep feeding your starter because essentially you need to feed your starter enough water and flour proportionate to the amount of starter that you have in the jar therefore when your starter starts to grow you don't want to keep having exponentially more and more starter because it will double each time so that is why you discard half of the starter so that um, when you feed it you only have to feed it the same amount of water and flour every day so i do about a quarter cup of flour and then enough water to allow the mixture to get to this um, pancake texture so a little bit runnier than the day one mixture but more gloopy and pancakey uh, more like flapjacks that type of texture um, and this is obviously on day three so I allowed that uh, 48 hours to ferment but from then on I feed it every day every 24 hours So again a quarter cup of flour and enough warm water to allow it to get to a very uh, pancake flapjack um, type texture that's a little bit gloopy as well. So not too runny, you still want the mixture sticking together. Um, and then I pop the hair tie back on to uh, monitor where my starter started before it started rising and as you can see. You guys. She has risen. Look at that beautiful starter. So now we are on day seven and finally I've got an active starter. So by the way, when you discard starter, you can only start using that discard once the starter is active. So for the first week or two that, you, that you're making your starter from scratch, you're going to want to discard that starter and not use it but after that once it becomes active any discard that you have can be used in other recipes as well so bear that in mind your sourdough starter is also active once it starts to float in water so you saw me do the float test there and my starter is active enough to be able to use in baking so in my bowl here i've got about 100 grams of starter I literally just take as much starter out of the jar as um, you know as if I was going to feed it so I discard as much starter as if I was going to feed it into this bowl and then I do about 300 grams of water warm water I 
do about a tablespoon of salt and then I mix that nicely with a whisk and then in goes about 400 grams of flour so you're going to do a three to four ratio of water and flour here I realized that my scale had switched off actually in the middle of baking this so um, I actually kind of winged it from here on I switched the scale back on and I tried to figure out how much flour did I just put in so I did actually make a mistake here that's why I'm saying it's not really that important to measure because I really thought that this loaf was a bust at this point because now I didn't know how much flour I'd put in or water but I basically just kept putting in a little bit more flour until I got a really sticky dough so you want it to be a shaggy sticky mess uh, it doesn't have to look like a bowl of bread or anything at this point literally kind of like very thick sourdough starter it doesn't have to have any shape to it just very thick and shaggy and um, sticky is a good word and then I cover that with a damp towel and then I actually went out for a while you want to leave that for about eight to ten hours depending on your temperature um, of your surroundings of course eight hours if it's a little bit hotter and ten hours if it's a little bit colder but we went out that day and honestly I thought that there was a bust I didn't expect to come home and have my dough risen the way it did so I actually didn't um, film the way my dough looked when it had arisen when I got home. But I did try, I did think to myself, even though I messed up the recipe, I don't know how much flour and water was in the dough. And also I left it for longer than 10 hours, I think. So I really thought it was a bust, but I thought, let me uh, form it into a round loaf and see what happens if I let it proof and bake. Um, I really didn't have any good expectations at this point. I do know that a lot of people fail their first loaf of sourdough. So I did think, let me just experiment. I'm still going to bake it off and um, see if if what comes out of it. But my dough did rise significantly when I left it on the counter, even though I've, I've been out of the house the whole day. I completely forgot about it, but when I got home, it was... A new different type of consistency something that I could um, mold into a loaf shape and it was also like triple in size I would say um, I just wet my hands every time I wanted to shape the dough because the dough is still sticky but it is something that you can form into a dough ball so wet your hands so that it's not so that it's easier to um, manage and then I folded it over, I did some stretch and folds. By the way, um, you're also supposed to do more stretch and folds uh, in the bulk fermentation process. But of course, I left the house at that point, so I didn't get to do any stretch and folds beforehand. But basically, a stretch and fold is when you take the dough from and you stretch it from the one corner over. And as you saw me pinching the corners together, um, and I stretch and folded that into a bowl. Then I preheated my oven with my pot in it. This is a oven safe pot with a lid. That is important because you do need a lid to be able to allow steam inside to allow the bread to cook. And then I did that while my dough was proofing. So the proofing stage is a, li is a little bit more of a fermentation but not as, as much as the bulk. I proofed it for about an hour and a half and you want to proof it until you touch the dough and it springs back nice and easily the way you saw when I was poking my dough. Um, it, spring it's <coughs> it springs back nice and easily and then I put that on some parchment paper uh, with some semolina flour to allow it not the dough not to stick to the parchment and then I put that in my pot and the pot goes into the oven Five minutes later I take the pot out and I remove the lid so now you can see that the dough the bread is cooked but I 
will really want to get that charred crust on top so I will put it back in the oven without the lid on. Look at that beautiful loaf of sourdough, wow! I can't believe this turned out so well, especially since I thought I had made so many mistakes. But like I said, it turns out that sourdough is much easier than you think. And it's not that complicated, you don't have to overthink it. This is how the bread looks when I cut in it. It's not the best loaf of sourdough, but I love it. And look how beautiful! So that was my first loaf of sourdough bread. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and let me know if you want me to make any more sourdough videos. I'd love to do it on this channel. Like I said, this channel is going to be more about my hobbies this year. I can't seem to stop making sourdough bread. So do let me know if you want to see more sourdough videos from me. Comment down below any questions you might have for me and also give this video a like if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe on your way out and share this video with anybody else that you think would enjoy it. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Mwah.